Uh, this on your screen right now is a live video from a nuclear plant in Ukraine in a city called Enerhodar. It is not only the largest nuclear plant in Ukraine, but let's be clear, it is actually the largest nuclear plant in all of Europe. And according to Ukraine's Minister of Foreign Affairs tonight, Russia right now is firing on all sides of that nuclear power plant in Enerhodar. The mayor of the city says that the plant is currently on fire. This video was caught on the security camera earlier this evening, appearing to show some kind of projectile being fired at the plant. The International Atomic Energy Agency, which, uh, as you know, works to promote uh, safe use of nuclear power around the world, says that they are aware of reports of the shelling outside this plant that is taking place in Ukraine. They say they are in contact with Ukrainian authorities about this situation. Now, we actually talked about this plant last night uh, because yesterday, you may recall, hundreds of the plant workers and people from the nearby city who live around it, they actually formed kind of a human shield in the road leading up to the nuclear power plant. Russia, as we have noted throughout this program and others, has already seized the site of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. And the fear is that Russia will try to seize other active nuclear power plants in Ukraine, which supply most of the nation's electricity. And so the people who live around this particular plant yesterday tried to block access to it, tried to stop Russia from having an easy time from taking it over. Tonight, according to Ukrainian officials, Russia is firing on all sides of this power plant. Again, you're looking at a live video that is being broadcast by the plant. And I should note that this is the middle of the night in Ukraine. And the number of people watching this static, grainy, black and white security camera feed of a nuclear power plant, it's not exactly must-see TV right now, but right now, in this very moment, thousands of people are doing just that, out of fear of what could happen next, because the potential for a catastrophe here is just unparalleled. It is one thing for Russia to seize energy production in Ukraine, to cut off electricity, to kind of put the cities under blackout, but doing it by force, doing it with live ammunition is just unfathomably dangerous. Like I said, officials say the plant is already on fire and a fire alone can affect the plant's cooling system, causing the reactors to overheat and melt down, which is what happened in Japan at Fukushima back in 2011. And it's in some ways its own kind of slow moving nuclear disaster. And then, of course, with fire and meltdowns come the potential explosion. More than 50,000 people live in the city around this nuclear plant. It is about 250 miles from Ukraine's second largest city, a little over 400 miles from Kyiv. And if we learned anything from the Chernobyl disaster, radioactive nuclear waste can travel far. It can travel fast in an explosion. The Ukrainian foreign minister saying this tonight. Russians must immediately cease the fire and allow firefighters to establish a security zone. If the plant blows up, it will be 10 times larger than Chernobyl. Uh, joining us now is James Acton. He is the co-director of the Nuclear Policy Program at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Mr. Acton, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Uh, I think I and a lot of people around the world, certainly people watching this program, have a lot of questions about how exactly to process what we are learning this evening come out of, coming out of Ukraine. Instinctively, a lot of people are going to be concerned. What threat does a fire like the one we just heard about pose to a plant like this? Well, thanks for having me on this evening, and this is a serious situation. The first thing that I want to emphasize is that uh, radiation levels around the plant appear to be normal right now. Uh, the plant's own website uh, measures radiation levels. They put that data out in real time. Uh, the website crashed just before we went on air, I think just because of the sheer number of people trying to get access to it. Uh, but last time I was able to get access to the website and last time and, and the most recent information we have from Ukrainian authorities is that radiation levels at the plant are normal. The big concern, though, is the one that you highlighted, which is the possibility that a fire could disrupt the power supplies for the plant's cooling systems, um, without which there is the uh, uh, without which fuel inside the reactor would melt down. Now, we are 
I have no knowledge of the status of those cooling systems, and in particular, the status of the power supplies of the cooling systems. But that's the most important concern in this situation. And the first thing that comes to mind, obviously, is being able to protect the cooling system and to try to put that fire out. That is just what instinctively appears to me to be the first uh, cause of action, I should say, or course of action. From your expertise, what needs to happen now to mitigate the potential damage here? What can be done to prevent a potential catastrophic event? You're absolutely right. The, 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 the key here is to extinguish the fire um, and thus to prevent uh, irreparable damage to the uh, power supplies for the cooling system. Um, the concern that I've always had, uh, I mean, had since the beginning of this falling war, um, is that in the event that there were an accident at a nuclear power plant, such as a fire, that firefighters wouldn't be able to get to the plant uh, partly because they're so busy in other activities, and I'm sure this is a priority for them, but also because they're in a war zone. They can literally be shot by Russian forces trying to get to the plants. Ukrainian authorities have said that has happened. Um, so I very much hope that firefighters have been able to get to the plant and have been able to extinguish the blaze. Uh, I, have no, I have no information on the status of the blaze at the moment. Uh, but you're absolutely right that it's getting firefighting uh, equipment and the firefighters to the plant um, um, that's, that's, that's the most immediate priority in this situation. Just because you have much more, um, you know, information and understanding of how this works, could an attack like this have the potential to drain the pools in which the spent fuel is stored um, at these plants? Can you tell us why that would be so dangerous and what the potential damage could be here? I mean, we heard the Ukrainian foreign minister describe this plant by saying it could be 10 times worse than Chernobyl. Can you put that in perspective for us? I'm not sure if you're aware about this plant and in terms of its output, just how realistic that would be. So in terms of um, people are naturally going to Chernobyl as an example here for obvious reasons. Um, the more relevant example is Fukushima. Um, that is, uh, uh, that would be a very, uh, uh, one of the worst case scenarios from here. I'm not predicting that we are going to end up with a Fukushima-like accident. Um, but that was a meltdown caused by a complete loss of cooling in the plant. Uh, in that case, uh, it was a tsunami that caused all of the uh, loss of cooling in the plant. Uh, in terms of spent fuel, um, I think it is extraordinarily unlikely uh, that the kind of weapons that have been reported to be used around the plant uh, would have the capability to um, damage the spent fuel pools. Um, but if hypothetically those pools were to be damaged and were to drain, you have a very, typically, you have a pretty large amount of spent fuel sitting in those pools uh, from uh, all of the time the reactor has been in operation. Uh, without cooling, there would be a serious uh, uh, risk of that fuel melting down, potentially releasing extremely large amounts of radiation. I want to emphasize here that nothing I have seen tonight um, in terms of the um, reports of the weaponry used around the plant makes me think there is any likelihood of a spent fuel pool accident. Um, rather, my, 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 my bigger concern here is about the fuel currently inside uh, the reactors and keeping that material cool. Mm. No, I'm, and I'm uh, very appreciative that you're able to provide that uh, perspective and context for us about what concerns you. I think some people who are watching this are going to be asking a similar question to what we asked just a couple of days ago when Russia was advancing on the site of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster, which is what would happen if Russia seized Ukraine's power grid and was able to cut off this nuclear power plant's access to it? Is that something that you're worried about? Because the, the assumption that is made by some analysts is that Russia wants to control the power that runs throughout the entire country as another pressure point to apply to the people of Ukraine in being able to, for lack of a better word, get their surrender in this conflict. There's a very serious risk there. Nuclear power plants are not isolated islands that are entirely self-contained. Um, they require, we've already talked about the need, in this case, for firefighters to be able to get there. Um, the cooling systems, uh, if a reactor is scrammed, if a reactor is shut down, uh, and I assume that the three reactors that were operating today have now all been scrammed as a result of this accident, 
um, they require power to cool themselves. Uh, ideally, that power comes from a nation's electricity grid. Uh, one of the concerns about a fire is that it can, uh, 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 it can break the power connection into the plant. It's possible that um, shelling, if it's correct that the plants have been shelled, um, uh, I'm not entirely clear what specific kind of munition was used, uh, but it's possible that shelling could break that uh, grid connection. Um, it's possible that uh, Russia could deliberately at, uh, attack electricity grids, as, for example, NATO did during the 1999 Kosovo conflict. So um, there is absolutely a danger to the plant if its external e electricity connection is cut. Now, there are backup power supplies within all nuclear power plants. They're typically provided by, uh, by emergency diesel generators. I believe that is what this plant is outfitted with, too. But again, a fire could, in the worst case, uh, disrupt the working of those diesel generators, especially if firefighters can't get on site. And I just want to say and share with our viewers right now, while you and I were speaking, we've gotten a statement from the Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky, about this specific topic. Uh, and a short a while ago, he posted a video uh, on the Telegram channel that he has been communicating with the public. I'm going to read a part of it here. It says, Europe has to wake up now. The NPP is on fire now. Europeans, wake up, please. It is time to wake up. Uh, so again, it, clearly significant news coming out of Ukraine at, at this hour. Um, and now the reaction coming both from the Ukrainian leadership as well as we mentioned the International Atomic Energy Agency. We also understand that the White House, the president, has been in touch with President Zelensky. We'll try to get a readout of that phone call when we have it.